Hello and welcome back to Patient Knowledge. I'm Dr. Kirmani and I'm back with another health video. And today I will be talking about an important health condition which affects the air passages of the lungs and is commonly known as bronchitis. Before we move on to our video, I would also like to mention that I have made uh, other videos on other health conditions and one of them is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and the other one is rheumatoid arthritis. I will leave a link in the description box below. Do check them out. So let's get back on our today's video. Let's see what is bronchitis. In this video, I will tell you everything about bronchitis. What is the cause of this condition? What are the symptoms? How common is bronchitis? What's the outcome? It's the risk and treatment. And at the end of the video, I will give you some red flags. So stay till the end. What's bronchitis? It's an inflammation of the mucus lining of the bronchial tree or air passages of the lungs. Now the inflammation affects the trachea, the large bronchial tubes called the bronchi and the smaller bronchial tubes called bronchioles. Now, there are two types of bronchitis, acute and chronic. Acute bronchitis refers to sudden onset of this inflammation or swelling, while the term chronic refers to the more serious long-term condition which follows the repeated attacks of acute bronchitis. For a better understanding, here's a picture of a healthy uh, air passage and the one in bronchitis. So you can see there is inflammation of the lining of the bronchial tube. This one probably is a picture of chronic bronchitis because the narrowing is quite significant. This is because of repeated attacks of acute bronchitis. Now, what's the cause of this condition? Acute bronchitis is almost always caused by one of the many common respiratory viruses. Now, most cases begin with just a common cold. The infection spreads from the nose and throat down the trachea into the bronchial tubes. Another cause of inflammation or swelling is from breathing air that contains airborne pollutants such as chemical fumes, dust, and smoke. And this irritates the bronchial tree. Now let's look at some of the symptoms. They are caused mainly because of the sput because of the discharge or the secretions from the lining of the muc mucous membrane and also because of narrowing of the air passages of the lungs. So the most common or main symptom is an irritating cough that produces little or no sputum initially, but may later bring up grayish or yellowish sputum called phlegm. The other ones are related to narrowing of the air passages, such as wheezing or noisy breathing, breathlessness or shortness of breath, fever because of infection, can be viral or bacterial infection. And also there might be some discomfort behind the sternum, which is made worse by coughing. Now who gets it? The risk is increased in smokers, people who live on cold or humid weather, uh, those who are living in areas of high atmospheric pollution. Uh, once those who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and people with congested lungs from heart failure, those who have recent illnesses, and it happens in certain ages, such as very young people or old people who are more prone to get this condition. What's the outcome and risks? About 85% of healthy people who contract acute bronchitis find it improves spontaneously in about four to eight days. However, sometimes, especially in those in the risk categories mentioned, the infection can be complicated by bacterial superinfection. 
These patients may get worse with increasing severe symptoms and cannot shake off the infection. Now, what are the risks? There is no significant risk to the lungs if a healthy non-smoker has a single attack of acute bronchitis. However, it can be serious, especially in debilitated people, where complications such as persistent bronchitis or pneumonia can develop. Recurrent episodes are a concern in smokers and those with an existing lung disorder, such as pulmonary fibrosis. Now, this is dangerous because it can eventually lead to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. What's the treatment? Antibiotics are reserved only for those people who develop bacterial infection. Otherwise, antibiotics are avoided because it is caused by a virus. Now, self-help measures will help to ease the symptoms. So, rest at home. A bed rest is not necessary. A warm, well-ventilated room is best. Take aspirin or Panadol for fever or chest discomfort. Take any over-the-counter cough medicine that works for you for a non-productive cough. A heat pack or warm water bottle placed on the chest may relieve discomfort. Steam inhalations using a mentholated preparation in very hot water can clear your nasal and bronchial passages. In some cases, your doctor may prescribe a bronchodilator drug administered by aerosol inhalation to relieve any wheezing, which is like a puffer that is given to people with allergies or asthma. Now, here are some red flags, which means you need to seek urgent medical attention in case you develop any of these symptoms, such as increased shortness of breath, high fever and chills, chest pain, discolored or bloody sputum, vomiting, and any other serious symptoms. Now that's all for today. I hope this information about bronchitis was useful in understanding what is this condition and how to manage it. Thank you for listening. Now if you wish to hear something about, leave it in the comment box below. Bye for now.